Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, kindly do me a favor and click on, uh, click on, um, the hell is it called? Click a like, right? Click a like. Sorry, long day. Click a like, show your support for the channel. And again, I'll try to help you guys uh, as much as I can on an unbiased uh, daily journey to uh, hopefully long Germany. So yesterday we saw kind of the pregnant pause of the semi rotten. If you guys remember, uh, ASML uh, came out with earnings uh, mid morning and, you know, they kind of killed the whole momentum. And the question was going into today's session was, well, was this going to be an outlier event? And tomorrow we start kind of going back higher. Or is this something to, well, kind of pay attention to, to see if the market, the little bit of shifts of momentum are changing. We kind of got our answer on both sides, right? It's kind of speaking on both sides of the mouth. I like it, but I don't like it. I think it's strong, but it's relatively weak. We kind of got that day today. And here's, without confusing you anymore, here's kind of what I'm talking about. So we talked about last night, the QQQs. You guys remember if the QQQs will lose uh, the 10 day moving average, they should go lower. Well, that's exactly what happened, right? That's exactly what happened today. The market gapped up. Uh, we lost. I even gave you guys that area on the Qs, uh, 488.68. And I said, well, if, there's, you know, if it starts losing, it could go down to the 20 day. That's exactly what happened. And this morning, it looked like the NASDAQ was going to fall off a cliff. It really did. And it successfully tested its next support zone and started bouncing. The problem is, if you look at a lot of the heavy weighted names on the NASDAQ uh, 100, they look like grim death. I mean, they were really coming, you know, coming off the hinges and a lot of selling took place in those names. So let me give you guys a couple of examples. Microsoft got absolutely hit this morning, very, very aggressively. We talked about last night, uh, Microsoft on the video, uh, 415, if it builds below, you know, stock went all the way down to 410 today. Again, very, very close uh, to a macro breakdown. We talked about Meta. You guys remember we, talk, we talked about Meta? Well, what happens if Meta, right? What happens if Meta loses the bottom channel? Well, we saw it, right? Meta lost the bottom channel and went all the way down. It was a $7 candle uh, at the open. You saw a lot of weakness uh, in AMD, right? You saw a lot of weakness in uh, AMD. Uh, Meta, Apple, since having that big move up yesterday, right? Kind of completely reversed course, filled in this whole gap, uh, held the five-day moving average for now, and bounce. So you said to yourself, well, how is the NASDAQ still up, right? With all those heavy names uh, showing weakness, and again, including uh, Amazon. Uh, Amazon did absolutely nothing. Some of the technology names uh, that were part of that ASML debacle yesterday, they got stronger today, right? They got stronger today. They did not take out the previous day's high, and that was very, very important. So the semiconductors are live by the sword, uh, dive by the sword scenario in this market. And you saw names like MU go absolutely crazy and now put in the highest channel of this whole move. You saw NVIDIA today, right? Getting call buying, started really getting aggressive call buying again towards the middle of the week. The 136, the 137, the 140 calls uh, after yesterday's ASML debacle. A name like SMCI, right? SMCI, number one, is getting super duper tight. Right, super duper tight, never came in today. It got rejected off the top of the channel here, right? We'll get to the pivots in a second. It got rejected at the top of the channel here. But here's what's continuing to be interesting about uh, SMCI. Number one, there's overall market chatter that they are going to give some sort of guidance. If you guys remember, uh, there's a whole crap show going on. Hindenburg Research uh, is, uh, you know, was, was putting out basically a hit piece. Uh, on SMCI, and then you had the uh, whole probe from the Department of Justice. So it's going to be very, very, you know, very, very, um, you know, curious if they do put out their 10K, if they do put out, uh, you know, to see, you know, what, what their financials actually look like, make sure there is no delay. 
And the odd part about it is for the last two days, we saw 50 and 51 weeklies come in. When the stock was yesterday, 45, 46, $47, we saw 50 and 51 weekly calls. And I'll say, well, what, what's going on here? Why is there 50 and 51 calls? And then this morning, we saw aggressive call buyers coming in for the 50, 51, 53, 54 calls. It's one of those scenarios. Does somebody know something, right? You know, again, and it's always one of those scenarios that somebody probably does know something, but the way they are betting, it sounds like some sort of news is coming out, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. I have no idea. I'm not going to speculate. But the point, if you look at the options market, they are betting the 50, 51, 53, 54 weekly calls. We saw some even 60s uh, come in for a little bit further uh, expiration. So it's definitely one to watch. Uh, for the next couple of days, especially if it could get back above uh, the supply zone where it got rejected to. So it's very, very uh, important to understand. However, what continues to be a focal point in this market is speculation money, guys. And that's the name of the game. Even when you have stocks that are a mainstay, especially in my world, right? Like the, the mega cap beta names, what's going crazy right now are the small, smaller cap, right? Smaller to mid cap names. Uh, we talked about, for example, last night, SSMT. You guys remember last night we talked about SSMT if it gets back above this channel here? Went bonkers today. You know, look at a name like ASTS, right? Bonkers today. Look at a name, for example, like LEU. I don't even know what these symbols are, right? But they're going bonkers. Look at OKLO. OKLO had short term expiration in the 1550, 17, 20, 22, 50 calls. So, again, the market, no matter how weak or strong it perceives, you can see the overall bullish tone in the space. And because, again, when you have the market leaders resting, like we talked about in, in yesterday in the prior video, there is always rotation in other names. So, for example, even a name like drug, I'm just using this as an example, right? I'm using this as an example. I'm not, I'm not looking at the stock. I don't care about the stock. I'm just using it kind of an example. Yesterday, the stock was up 1,400%, right? Mind-boggling. Today, the stock was down nine bucks, right? Down nine bucks, what it was, 20%. So you have 1,400% to the upside and 20% to the downside, right? That's not exactly what you call fear. But the point is, and again, I'm just using this as an example. By no stretch do I care about the stock. But I'm just using kind of making my point that there is overall phenomenal market sentiment uh, continues in this tape. Stocks that are coming off the bottom ranges are acting incredible. And if they do confirm, especially with option flow, there's usually a magnificent move. It's just kind of the symbols that we saw a couple of minutes ago that I that I kind of demonstrated. So let me give you guys uh, let me give you guys some names. Uh, let me give you guys some names uh, that I kind of do like. Uh, for tomorrow, and um, I gotta run because my kids have uh, my kids have training. So let me give you guys some names uh, that I do like for tomorrow. Um, all right, we talked about SMCI. Uh, look at Nvidia, right? Look at Nvidia just in case, right? Just in case it held today the ten day moving average, reclaim the five day in case the market rallies. Again, it's not a premium setup, but just in case the market rallies, keep an eye on Nvidia if it gets back above the five day moving average and reclaims, who knows, maybe we could get a run uh, upward. Uh, ASTS that had an absolute rock star move today, uh, got above this whole channel, got above the 50-day moving average. Again, it's a bullish thing. Uh, stopped today right at the upper Bollinger Band. If this thing has any weakness tomorrow, again, consider if you do trade these things, consider maybe a dip into rising 60-minute support, or if it continues and confirms today's channel, you could get another move uh, pushing north of 30. That looks really, really good. Uh, look at a name, for example, like BBWI. Again, these are weird symbols, right? These are weird symbols. They're never going to co really come across my desk. But again, these are the charts that are going nuts. The stocks that are coming out of ranges, coming out of these bottom ranges. Look at this BBWI, right? I have no idea what this thing is, but this thing got back above the supply here. It got rejected off the last supply, uh, which is roughly the 65-day uh, EMA. If this thing confirms tomorrow, who's stopping this thing? Based on what we're seeing, this type of action, who knows? Maybe this thing wakes up, goes 34, 35. Again, a name you should definitely uh, keep an eye on. Uh, look at a name, for example, like Clove, right? Look at a name like Clove today. Again, had a big move up, went sideways for a week. Look how tight this thing. If you, if you trade small cap stocks, look how tight this thing is. So that's a really good looking setup. 
Uh, Micron, I want to obviously watch as well. And Tesla. Let's talk about Tesla really, really quick, and then I got to bounce, right? So Tesla had this, you know, pretty ugly reaction uh, to the robo uh, tax. I was about to say RoboCop. Uh, robo tax the event came back in, and now it's just kind of doing nothing for the last five days. It's the last four days. Yet one, two, three, four. It's trying to get back above the five day moving average. Uh, that's the bullish case, right? That's the bullish case to get above the five day. But I'm also watching the bottom, right? It, again, it, 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 retail looks at it a little bit different than I do. Uh, retail looks at it, well, the bad news is out. Now it's consolidating to go higher. I kind of look at it the other way. I'm like, well, the longer it can't rally, right? The longer it can't rally and the longer uh, that the stock can get back above the five-day moving average, well, maybe there's a higher probability then the buyers will gas out and it'll go lower. So I'm open-minded to both sides. I, I really am. I saw some 230 call buying today. I also saw some 215 put buying today. So there's a very, very tight channel on Tesla. We will see in the next day or so which way it's going to break. Above the five-day, it should go a little bit higher to test back the 50. And below, uh, the, below the channel of the robo-taxi lows, it should give us another pretty strong opportunity to the downside. So that's it, guys. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody is happy and healthy. If you are interested in pivots, guys, again, all you do is click the link below. There's a 30-day uh, kick the tires thingy majingy. You'll see quickly uh, if pivots are a right um, fit for you. Guys, God bless everybody. Have to run, and I will see you guys on the field tomorrow.